We've done acids and bases in theory, but how do we actually do acid and base experiments in a classroom? We should first remember how we write up a scientific method. So say we want to make copper 2 sulfate from copper 2 oxide and sulfuric acid. The first thing in an experiment is deciding on an aim. The aim is just a way to say what you want to achieve in the experiment. In this experiment, the aim is to create the neutral salt, copper 2 sulfate, from the reactants, copper 2 oxide and sulfuric acid. Awesome, that's the first step. The next thing in an experiment is the method. How the equipment and chemicals are used and why. This is done step by step, like following a recipe. Step 1. This is to make a solution from our reactants. In this case we dissolve the black copper 2 oxide in the sulfuric acid. This isn't always easy, so sometimes we use heat to help it dissolve. Make sure to prepare all the equipment we need. Step 2. Remember our universal indicator? We can use it to follow the reaction. We want a neutral solution, a pH of 7, which is green on our universal indicator. Heating the acid, we add our black powder, copper 2 oxide, slowly until our indicator is green, making sure we stir the solution often. The universal indicator lets us know when the solution is neutral. Step 3. Taking the contents of the beaker, we pour the solution into an empty evaporating dish and leave it in a sunny place for a few days. Why do we do this? Let's take a look at the equation and see if that helps. With a metal oxide and acid, our products are the metal salt and water shown by the word equation. Copper 2 oxide plus sulfuric acid reacts to produce copper 2 sulfate and water. Our products are the salt and the water. To get our crystals, we want to get rid of this water and one of the ways we can do this in a classroom is to use an evaporating dish. Over time, the water evaporates and our awesome, colourful blue copper sulphate crystals are left behind. So that was for a metal oxide. But what happens when we change our experiments slightly? Remember, there are different types of reactions you should learn. In this one, we will do the same experiment but with copper 2 carbonate instead, which is a green powder. What is this equation? A metal carbonate and an acid when mixed does more than just form water and the salt. It also forms carbon dioxide. What do we know about carbon dioxide? Well, CO2 is a gas, at room temperature. When formed, it bubbles up to the surface of our solution. Think about a fizzy drink when it's been opened. Those bubbles are the carbon dioxide leaving the drink. The same happens in a neutralization reaction, but much faster. We can take advantage of this in our experiment. Although we can still use universal indicator strips, if we add the copper carbonate slowly, we know the reaction is neutral when carbon dioxide no longer bubbles out. Sometimes we might not know the products in our experiment, but there are ways to figure these out based on our observations. Take the second experiment for example. If bubbles form, we might assume there might be carbon dioxide being formed. In acid and base reactions, this is often true, but in chemistry it's hard to be sure. We can do another test to make sure what's being formed really is carbon dioxide. Lime water, or calcium hydroxide, is a common way to test for carbon dioxide. Here's a small experiment. Take some lime water and blow into it through a straw. You'll see it quickly go cloudy. When we breathe, we take in oxygen and release carbon dioxide. The test with lime water shows this. We can attach a lime water setup to our experiment in order to test if the carbon dioxide is really being formed. As the carbon dioxide is formed, it travels down the delivery tube and reacts with the lime water, making it cloudy and telling us that we have carbon dioxide. There is one last important experiment, and that's measuring the mass of the solution as the reaction occurs. As the carbon dioxide bubbles off, the mass of the solution decreases since the carbon dioxide is no longer in the beaker. The same happens when water evaporates. The mass shown on the scales will be lower than originally shown. Some key things to remember. Remember to always consider your aim. The formation of a neutral salt. Universal indicator or even litmus can tell you when your reaction is complete. We use the evaporating dish to remove the water, leaving the salt behind. Always consider the equation. If we have a carbonate, we would expect to see bubbles. These bubbles are carbon dioxide and can be tested for with lime water. When carbon dioxide bubbles off, 
the mass of the solution decreases.